Hi, Dolly here. Today I'm going to learn how to generate CAN messages with the CAN bridge. And if you want to tag along for some coding, then this is the video for you. Uh, let's start with asking why to even do this. So I have some bugs in my battery upgrade code. Um, as you can see from the bug tracker here, uh, some codes, some fault codes will be thrown uh, stemming from the battery after the vehicle has been battery upgraded. So uh, yeah, this is due to some messages not being sent to the battery. For instance, the onboard charger has changed the message ID from the first generation to the second. So, for instance, this one. So I'm going to add that to my code. But to do that, we first need to learn how to periodically generate and transmit CAN messages. So I'm using the Maxon CAN bridge and uh, I'm, I can put up on screen what my setup looks like. But uh, yeah, let, let's just ask, like, open up the example code that Maxon provides with the CAN bridge. So I'm gonna fire up Atmel Studio. And this is the raw file as it comes from Maxon. Let's just see if it compiles. Build. Yes, it compiles. And uh, let me just quickly upload that to the Cambridge. I heard a USB device lost Windows sound there. Um, so this code contains uh, some example stuff. It just uh, outputs to the USB port every second a uh, text string, a millisecond counter. So if we want to look at the output, uh, we can fire up Termite and connect to the CAN bridge. Uh, but I found a bug here in the example code. It uh, actually is overloaded, uh, the whole USB thing. So the watchdog actually triggers and resets the CPU because it's too yeah, in resource heavy. So we can solve this by adding some additional time for the watchdog timer. Let's just take 250 milliseconds to be on the safe side and then build the project again and upload it to the CAN bridge. And now I heard the Windows reconnect sound so I know that it it should have worked better. So now I can access the COM port that is generated by the CAN bridge and yeah now I'm, I am connected and the counter keeps counting. Uh, yeah, very nice counter example. <laughs> but yeah, now that we know that this works and uh, that Windows doesn't kill the device, we can try to generate some CAN messages. If we scroll up in this code, there is an example here, what a valid CAN frame looks like. So it's just a static message. It has the ID of 5BC length of 8 and it contains no data. So let's send that. Uh, if we go down to the main function, uh, we can just use this uh, second interrupt that is provided. If I start a new line here and write send can, uh, I'm using can3 as a channel and I paste the message there. Uh, so now every second it will send this static message onto CAN channel 3. Uh, let's try that. Let me just build this and upload it. And uh, let's open up CAN runner and look, take a look what it looks like. So I'm going to just initialize this and press play. And there we have it. It's a CAN message being sent. Uh, but here is where I noticed another bug in the example code. Uh, here it says that this should be a second interrupt. So it, there should be one second between the messages, but it's it's actually not that. So I found out that this, uh, this uh, timer here was incorrectly set up. Uh, it was set up for 48 megahertz, but the CPU actually runs at 32 megahertz. So if I save this and uh, let's build it again and upload it. 
and if we go to can runner and clear and take a look now what it looks like now yeah nice we're getting some drift but now it's pretty close to one second so okay uh, now wait what something happened i think the watchdog probably killed this yeah let's just uh <clears throat> for the time being let's remove the watchdog let's see if this works any better if i clear it now yep i'm getting this message every second yeah looks good so uh yeah, let's not use the watchdog timer while we have it connected to Windows. Uh, if you were to use this in an embedded operation, maybe not use this, maybe not have the USB connected because yeah, that could yeah trigger the watchdog timer. It just depends on your application, but uh, we're more interested in the can side now. So, uh, how do we get this to be sent faster? Well, let's look at the interrupt here. This is also just the example code. So every millisecond uh, we send a watchdog timer set and we increment this timer. Then we do some stuff here that is related to the USB port and we also decrement this uh, timer then we get this second interrupt so if i want to send this message at uh, 100 milliseconds i'm just gonna create a new timer let's let's call this one uh, let's just do a millisecond timer 100 and let's let's keep this completely separate from the example code so we increment this and uh, if this timer value equals uh, 100 then we do the stuff that we want to do here and we also reset the timer once we reach 100 so i'm just gonna scroll up here and add this also here so now we have it defined so that's our 100 millisecond timer now we can put stuff into here that we want to execute every 100 milliseconds uh, this is not how you should really do it you should probably add some task scheduling if you're gonna have a very long code but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be sending some can messages. So the, let's actually pause here and look at the thing that I, I want to send. Let me just grab this file. Okay, so here I have this uh, can log that I've taken from my vehicle. And what's really interesting here is for me to extract some of the messages that come from the onboard charger. And these have message ID, was it uh, these 390 and 393. So I'm going to be extracting a few of these can messages here from this list. Uh, it's actually the last byte contains a P run. <clears throat> so if you watch my other video on how Nissan protects their CAN bus, uh, they have a counter here at the end which um, increments on every message and resets once it reaches 4 or 0 to 3. So I will need 4 messages of each of these IDs. And uh, to save some time I have uh, prepared just that. So here I have message 0 to 3 of both the 390 and 393. So I'm just gonna copy that and go back to the program here and put it here below the example valid can frame so now we have the actual messages that I want to send so let's start by sending this first message and check if we can send it at 100 milliseconds that would be really cool 
uh, send can three and I want to send this message. Let's build this and upload and clear that and boom. Yeah. Oh, we still have the example message. Let's actually remove that. We don't need that. But yeah, uh, now we're getting a lot of can data very quickly. But it's just static. It's it's uh, looping over the one one message all the time 390. So we need to create a switch case here so that on each time that we hit this 100 milliseconds, we will alternate between the messages. So yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just gonna be creating a switch case here. Let's quickly type that up, type this up. I might uh, I might just speed this up in post. I don't know. Let's call this switch p run. So we will do a switch case based on this, and let's start with case zero. And after it is done, we will break and we will actually do, we will have four cases. So nice, nice indentation. So for zero, one, two, and three. And then just for good practice, we will need a default case also. But yeah, uh, so what do we put here? So we will have this p run we will actually uh, maybe each time we go in here we will do we will add one to p run uh, and uh, if if the p run has gone over three then we can set p run to zero okay this looks good uh, maybe just quickly declare pyron here also um, let's just copy this let's make it a volatile thing and let's default it to zero okay now we have pyron there um, let's go down to our uh, switch case and um, if we are in case zero, we want to send the message zero, but we want 390 and we want 393. So two can messages. And if we are in case one, case two, case three, whoops. Let's just make this a bit nicer. So two and three. Ah, this looks good. You know what? Let's move that to there. Good. Let's see if this compiles. It compiles. Let's press play. Whoa. Let's just clear all the message. Whoa, now we're getting a lot of messages. Let's just stop this so we can just do a sanity check. So, whoa, whoa, I forgot this. We're actually sending way too much. Let's let's start over. Build and press play. Clear. Okay, now it looks better. Stop. We only need a few messages. So each 100 milliseconds we are getting one or two messages. And uh, if we scroll up here in the code, we can compare and see that if it went right. So here the first message is seven and three, or C7 and 03. And this matches up here with, uh, with these. The next one, D8 and 14, D8, 14. And the ID, yeah, it's, oh, this, this just works, E9 and 25. F, A and 36 and then it should start over. Yes, and it does start over. So yeah, that's how you se send CAN messages with the CAN bridge. Wow, I, I wasn't expecting this to work that well on camera. But um, uh, one thing here about these interrupts, uh, 
this interrupt it fires every one one millisecond so you shouldn't put a lot here if you're gonna be making some really crazy logic here you should maybe just set a maybe do it like in the example code that you have a, an interrupt that you flag as high and then in the main loop you can then if it's high then you can do something so try not to make super elaborate yeah code inside the interrupt and also the, the reason we do this with interrupt instead of just uh, continuously doing it in the main and using some delays and, and such that would eat more cpu so this will end up in an embedded application so yeah that's why it needs to be done with interrupts and counters but yeah that is how you send can messages this was just a short video i will now take this what i just created here and i will adapt it into my production uh, code that I use for the battery upgrades and hopefully if you are a customer of mine you will be getting some new software that has fewer fault codes active yeah so yeah hope you enjoyed this video uh, smash like if you want to see more of this type of coding stuff uh, yeah that's it dollar out bye